It wasn't that long ago that I went through the DaVinci Resolve stabilization feature and showed and explained all the differences, but if you have one of these Sony cameras, I might have a Resolve beating stabilization program for you and it's free. So today we're gonna take a look at Catalyst Browse, which is Sony's own software. And yeah, roll up your sleeves, we're gonna get dirty and Resolve. And I'm gonna try to do my level best to compare it. And there may be a caveat in there that makes Resolve better for stabilization. So let's get started with Catalyst Browse and then we're gonna go over into Resolve. So. Starting with Catalyst Browse, I will leave a link in the video description below to Sony's website where you can download it for free. It's got a little registration deal. You download the file, you install it. You're, you've figured that part out. If you've gotten this far watching my video, you can do that. It's pretty easy. But once you have it up and running, then the magic happens. All right, we are in Catalyst Browse over here and I've got a folder set up with some test clips. This first one had no stabilization on. And I read somewhere that if you have stabilization on, it's not gonna work, but it does. And double clicking opens the file and nothing's happened. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go down to adjustments and click stabilize clip. Apparently even the lowly ZV-1 has a gyro in it and it records that data in your video files. So the first thing we have to do is click analyze and that'll take just a few seconds to run. And remind you, this clip was not stabilized by the ZV-1. Steady shot was off. And by default, your maximum crop amount is 0 0.10. And it's got auto cropping amount, yada, yada. You can just leave all this alone and drag this guy as much as you want. You see, it literally gives you a dial for how much, or a slider, for how much cropping you're gonna get. And the amount of crop that you specify is directly correlated to the amount of stability that you're going to get. The more crop, the more stable. The less crop, the less stable. And I'm gonna leave this at about 0.08, I think. There we go. And we can hit play. And it gives you the before and after. And I get that the footage is choppy looking because I'm running OBS and Resolve and everything else. So, I'm going to export this file and then play it back as part of the video, and then it will be smooth. You'll see, you'll see, stick with me. But I literally changed nothing and it's stabilized. And I like the crop and you can see here the before and after. You can tell it's cropping in a good amount, but again, this footage was not stabilized. So to export it, we go up and we click this icon here and it's going to give you a place to export it to. You could ignore all the source that's telling you what the source data is, you know, color space and frame size and all that. And then under transcode, you can leave it all the same because we're literally just going to make a copy of this file, but stabilized. And then we'll hit export and it's got the one clip that's gonna be exported and we're gonna hit okay. So up here you can see it's rendering the one file. It says about two minutes remaining. So we're just gonna wait for that to finish. And that took a couple of minutes. So now we're gonna hit this X and we're gonna say, okay, cause we're just gonna cancel out our changes. And then we're gonna go to the second clip. Again, double click to open, adjustments, stabilize clip, analyze. Now that it's analyzed, you can see, even if it's choppy, you can see that the left-hand side was not very well stabilized. When I recorded these clips, my Sony was mounted on this Ulanzi selfie stick, extended, and then adjusted so that it was like this. So I'm kind of sitting around like this or walking around like this. I get it. it every little movement here at my hand is gonna transfer to here and make it seem just crazy. So the fact that it's stabilized at all, I think is kind of impressive but it could be better and I'm always looking to make it better. Back to the footage. So in this one, 0.08 is good, I think. Let's drop this one down to 0.05 even. Yeah, that seems pretty solid. We'll go back to the beginning. And by the way, you can set the in and out points by dragging these little arrow icons. So if you know you only want the first few minutes of a clip, you can do that. In fact, I only need the first couple of minutes. So we're gonna set the out point there and we're gonna hit play. 
and you can see just how much smoother it is. That's crazy. Now we need to export it. So we're gonna go click on our button, our export button, and we're gonna click export. And it already has this file selected. We're gonna hit okay. And up here at the top again, it's gonna render this file. Estimating remaining time, three days. <sighs> it takes a while. And it depends on the speed of your computer, graphics card, yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. And I'm looking down because I got the window over here. I can see the window where it's rendering because two monitors. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that took a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was a solid half an hour to wait for that. So therein lies the rub. DaVinci Resolve does this in a matter of like 10 seconds. Let's go over to Resolve and do that. So here we are with our two clips. You can see the shakiness in this first one. That's gotta be hard to watch full screen. Ugh, garbage. The second one, you can see the first few seconds is really, really just wobbly, right? We've got our clips, we'll take the first one and I'm going to do 0.8 for our cropping ratio, choose similarity as the mode, and I've already tested this, so I know that's the mode to use. If you don't see inspector, it's right here. Click on the wrenches or the text there, and then we're gonna hit stabilize for that one clip. Takes about five seconds and it's done. I mean, boom, there, done. Now we're on the second clip, and I know from previous testing that it's 0.875 that we want. Similarity again, we're gonna hit stabilize, and this one's gonna take a little bit. And now that it's done, we can play our clip. You'll notice all that shakiness at the start is gone, and we didn't crop in too far. If you click this red icon here, it'll undo the stabilization or hide the stabilization. You can see we got about a 10 or 12% crop there. So now because I'm a Resolve guy and I like my entire workflow to be in Resolve, I know the Catalyst Browse takes at least 10 times longer than Resolve does to do the stabilization and it'll render at my normal speed. So let's go take a look at a comparison that I set up and on screen now you can see what Resolve is doing, what Catalyst is doing and what the original shaky footage was doing. So feel free to pause the video, go back and forth, take a look at what we see here and how they perform differently. These two clips, I think, are very good at showing the good parts of Catalyst Browse and the good parts of Resolve. Namely, speed. Same computer, same everything else running. I'm looking down to make sure OBS is running, but Catalyst Browse took forever and a day to render the video, and the rendered video actually ended up slightly larger than the original video. So I think that's kind of weird because I selected the same XAVCS, yada, yada, 1.21 gigawatt, 100 megabit per second, 4K 30 uh, as my output. And the file's just a little bit bigger. I don't really understand that one, but you know, I was hoping for a little better. Really, at the end of the day, Catalyst Browse is easy to dial in the amount of crop you want. But then again, if you've played around and resolve a little bit with their stabilization, then you kind of get a sense for how much it's gonna crop and where you wanna start and maybe tweak from there up or down to make sure that everything in frame is in frame that you want. Because in the first clip, my GoPro needed to be in frame. I was talking about the GoPro. Well, if you leave the default settings for DaVinci Resolve stabilization, it ain't gonna be in there. It's gonna be off frame. Whereas in the second clip, I'm walking. So it was more important that I be in frame and you see something around me. So I didn't wanna crop in you know, as much as maybe Resolve wanted to, but it was okay for a little bit more crop because I'm the center of attention there. I'm a narcissist, I get that. So anyway, I hope you've seen some of the pros and cons of using DaVinci Resolve stabilization versus Catalyst Browse and which works better. And obviously they're gonna have different use case scenarios where one will be better than the other. And honestly, having the gyro in the Sony ZV-1, I might have to play with that a little bit more. We might have to revisit this at some point over the summer. 
if you're watching this and it's winter or it's already summer, that makes no sense. Anyway, until next time, go watch this video and I'll leave you with the two mantras. One, you have a 100% track record of making you through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. Maybe it's testing out your Sony camera and some free software. Hmm. John out.